having trouble connecting. Please check your... Ah. You're live now. Hello, everybody. Well, good evening and welcome to everybody. And I am just going to have a quick look at the chat and welcome whoever's in at the moment. So bear with me a second. I'd just like to say hello to... I will get used to this stream yard. All right, let's start up here. Well, Peak Twisted Trees, obviously, which I'll introduce later on. Good evening, William. William Kenny, and welcome. Mark Pritchard, good evening. Paul Finley, hello. Uh, Mike's gone. Mike's well, gone. Mike's fell out again. Mike's fell out. Pete was fell yeah, out. Yeah, so Mike's out. Peace and Charles now. Okay, so... Um... Uh, Paul Finley was next. Mark Pritchard. Malcolm Douglas next, Pete. <laughs> there you go. Come on, Mike. Yeah, Where, on. Wurzel's in on your live as well, a Wurzel. <laughs> Malcolm Douglas is there. Paul Finley's there. We got that already. Carlston, Carsten Pedersen's there. Uh, further down the list, we go to William. Ian Lee's also with us. This could be a live for Mike. He's back in. Look, I've got to, so far, Mike, I've got oh, to Ian Lee halfway down okay. the list. Sorry about that. I pressed the wrong button. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, at least you know it is live. And uh, goodbye, I'll Brian. Tell you, I'll tell you what. See, <laughs> see, you've got. To, <laughs> it's all right, Brian. Just fell off my chair. Sorry. <laughs> it wouldn't be me if it if it went wrong. I I can't uh, see. I can't find Ian now. I tell you what, Terry, you carry on from where you are. Yeah. Oh, okay I'll, then. I'll yeah. say Hello, good Ian. evening as well. Good evening, Ian, and welcome. Yeah, Jerry Dempsey's in there. Good evening, Jerry. Ward Wilson's there from Arizona. Hi, Ward. How are you? Ward is actually doing a craft show at the moment, so he can't get involved in the chat, but he's there. No, Fred Gilliver's in. Oh, hope it goes well. So, hello, Fred. Wyvie Woodshed's there as well. Hello, Wyvie. How are you? Ta have you Todd have Glenn you Cove Woodworks is in. Have you got to... Um... Paul Finley. Yeah, we got Paul, yeah. yeah. Good, 16 well, good evening time. to everybody that Terry said hello to. Yeah, Susie the Swiss uh, Returner is there, uh, and there's only a Susie. few more, I think. Just and, jumping and, on and down and Alex Wurzel, you got Alex. Yeah, Wurzel's there, yeah. Alex there, yeah. Fred and, Gilliver, uh, you've got Paul Finley, yeah. you've got Susie. And Anthony Andy. Green's in. Anthony Green's there, so if you can find Anthony is on from there. I'm scrolling down because they're chatting to each other. Andy the Valley would turn us in. Paul H. the Greasy welcome, Turner. Andy. Good evening, good evening, and welcome. Beer would turn us in, the Swiss word turner. Des oh, Barnwell's in. Every, Des Barnwell's. Everybody say hello to Des. Hello, Des. Hello, Des. Des, Des, in. Hello, Des. How are you? I'm welcome. Simon good Watson's evening. in. Right. Good evening, uh, Simon, and welcome. Alan Richardson. Alan Richardson's there. Hi, Alan, and welcome to you. Joseph King is in. Keith P is uh, in. Uh, hello, Joseph. <laughs> <laughs> Good evening, Joseph. And I won't welcome, say any more about mate. Joseph. Yeah. No, I Joshua Joseph. Sang Sangu is in. Hello, Joshua, and welcome. The Wood Dude is in as well. The Wood Dude. Good evening, Malcolm Douglas. Even. Hello to Todd at Glen Cove. Gazza yep. Gazza is in. I think that, and good evening to you, Gazza, as well. I think that covers everybody, does it not? Yeah, Ari Klein, Nigel Oram. It's just a few good more. Evening, Nigel. Don, John M. Uh, Jamal Dr. Jahorar. That's well, apologies if I got the pronunciation of your surname wrong. Old Man River, Wood Turner's in. I mean, look, they're all coming in good so evening, fast. Welcome. Trouble, Mike. Uh, Mike, who is in? The bottom of my chat, I got Terry Bartlett. Oh right, okay. Well, Paul so you Finley. obviously just that's woodwork it. learners right. in intermediate. He's in. Good um, evening and welcome. The bottom of your chat is hello to Terry, uh, Jason Wheeler, and Terry Bartlett. There we are, Mike. You're all up to date. Okay, that's brilliant. Well, welcome to all of you, and uh, 
I will now bring in my trusty earworms. <laughs> and, uh, well, earworms. Um, I found something out today that I didn't know before, that if I want to get rid of somebody, mainly Brian, I can get rid of him <laughs> quite easily. I know Yay! how to do that bit. So in the top Demonstration, right please, screen, Michael. Demonstration. Uh, yeah, I'll just quick say something say something nasty, Brian, to me. See like you norm there we are. It's... See he's gone. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> I got rid of him. He he's no longer with us. And I can bring <laughs> him back. He sent me a fiver by PayPal, so I've got him back now. Okay. Uh so we got Pete, <laughs> Pete Ravenscroft, Pete everyone. The Twisted Trees. Uh we got the inimitable Brian, who's B of Hartwood Turning. Evening, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and you as well, mate. <laughs> and Terry, uh, even everybody Terry of Hackington, Hackington Arts, Hackington Arts, Hackington, or oh, not Hackington, <laughs> Hackington, it's, it's Hackington not, Arts. We don't call him, we don't call him Terry anymore. Arts. No, we don't what call him like Terry this? anymore. It's, it's <laughs> Posh Terry from Hackington Arts. Oh, yeah. Posh Terry. What posh I'd like Terry. to say to everybody is. Today I'm going to be covering the spindle gouge for sort of beginners, intermediaries, whatever, whatever. Go through as much as I can. I've got a list of things I want to cover. Um, between us lot here, there's like 75 years worth of experience. Um, so in the chat, anybody wants to ask any questions when I'm actually showing something or when I'm doing anything, please put it in the chat and the guys will make sure that it is relayed whether they answer it or whether I answer it doesn't matter as long as the question is answered, but do it in real time. Don't be afraid to ask any question. And remember, there's no such thing as a silly question. It's silly not to ask it and to find the answer. So that's what these lives are all about, these particular ones about the tools. If you've got any questions whatsoever, please don't hesitate to ask. And if I can demonstrate the answer, I will do so, even if it's not what I'm doing at the time, we'll get round to it. Okay, so that's basically- Just for you, Marie Klein. Marie Klein says, great to see you, Mike, from San Hello, Leandro Marie. in California. And welcome. So you're reaching there. This man, and you can, you can hear me and all Mark, Mark the way Richard needs to be timed out, because he just said, Why? 750 years, don't you mean? <laughs> hey. I wish, I wish, I wish. <laughs> okay, so we'll get started. And um, the first thing I'm going to do, and of course the lads will make sure I've got the right camera on. He's the background. We might do a little bit of moving the cameras to get the right angle for a certain thing if they think I haven't already pre-programmed it in. Okay, so we're going to go to the overhead now, and I'll get rid of the lads for That's the moment. The right Go I'm doing that. that. I've done that. Okay. So what we have here are four different spindle gouges in size. You've got a quarter inch, a three eighths inch, a half inch, and a three quarter inch. Now the main difference, as most of you will know, between a spindle gouge and a bowl gouge is the flute is much shallower than the bowl gouge, and it is made of smaller stock hence it is not as robust as a bull gouge but it's not meant for that it's meant for spindle work and for more finer detail work the quarter inch gouge i got that about 10 years ago with a little thing called the decorating elf and i'll be honest with you i never use it because i can do everything i want with my other grind so I'm going to remove these and just go through the basics of what is the uh, terminology, if you like. As you can see, you've got a what they call a fingernail grind. They quite often come from the factory with a straight over grind with no wings. There, hopefully the camera will pick it up. Swept back wings, important thing with the wings, either straight, but not, you can have a, a slight um okay. radius going down to the nose but not that way because then yeah. you've got a I'm point of cutting enough. there and a point of cutting there and you're asking for a catch now on this spindle gouge the bevel angle and that's what the bevel angle is there is 40 degrees i have another one which is another 3 8 which has a 30 degree bevel and 
it doesn't matter what that looks like. It just takes the heel away so you can really get it to very tight corners. And I'll show you that later on. Just a quick correction, out, Mike. You said 40 degrees. You meant 45, didn't you? No, the uh, spindle gouge is 40 and 30. All right. You, you weren't listening to what I said to you pre or going live, were you? Um, well, all my spindle there. gouges, all my spindle gouges, apart from the... Um, oh, I've moved the camera now. There we go. Um, all the spindle gouges, apart from the 30 degree, are at 40 degrees, and that's what I prefer. It's not set in stone. You can have them whatever you like. Uh, this is a, a half inch spindle gouge that also swept back wings, fingernail grind, and that is also at 40 degrees. Very good for hogging wood, and I'll show you that there. Also, just to show you it, that is the it's almost like a continental spindle gouge, if you like. It's a very shallow flute, um, three quarters of an inch across, and again, swept back wings and a 40 degree bevel. But the bevels, as I say, I hardly think it's worth mentioning this one because I never use it, but it is at 40 degrees. Uh, it can be used, but it's a very, very small stuff. Um, it's not very. Tiny finial, uh, maybe. Yeah, but even then, you can use a 30 degree or mm. skew, whatever. Um, and one thing I'd like to just say from the very beginning is that all I'm trying to do in these in this sort of series of lives is to show the viewer and the people here what can be done with this particular tool. It doesn't mean to say that you must use this tool for that particular job. It just gives you the versatility of each tool, and then you will find what you're happy with yourself. So that is the object of the exercise. Question, so Mike. Just, yeah, question. Okay, answer. well, just, just to say that Mark Pritchard's had to go because he's in too much pain, so hope you get better oh, soon, sorry Mark. Oh, I'm sorry that, Mark. Yeah. Sorry okay. Okay. Karsten Pedersen says, when you say 40 degrees, what whatever degree, or question, you know, slash whatever degree, it, this, this is measured from inside the bottom of the flute? 40 degrees, if you can see this, um, the yeah, bevel, got it. yeah, the nose from the tip of the nose to the heel is 40 degrees. From the okay. vertical? Yeah. Yeah, from so the if, vertical. If, if you, if Unlike the skew it. where you've got two angles, it's one angle, it is 40 degrees. And then, of course, that's the 30 degree one. And you can see that is a lot shallower. It's much, much more acute. For getting into tight corners okay so it is the angle of the bevel from the nose eye the tip to the heel and that is the that is the angle <clears throat> excuse me and the reason for getting rid of this under there is just that that won't catch it means you can get into a tighter situation without causing the, all you really need is about an eighth of an inch of the bevel there. You could cut off, you could grind all that heel away if you wished, because it's only the very tip, it's only the very edge that needs to be at that angle that you'd like to use. My version of that has got a two mil bevel. Mm -hmm. The rest is ground away. Yeah. That is just for finials and just for getting into tight spaces. Yeah, well, I, 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 exactly. I mean, I find this one to be adequate. You possibly would use the skew instead, but as I say, it's just to show the versatility of each type of tool, and you don't have to use that tool for that particular job, but you know it can be done. So it's it's not just for, you know, uh, it's not just for making a cove and a, and a bead. Okay, so we've covered through those, and... The same thing applies, I'll go to the overhead now. The same thing applies and alter just a little bit. And so, Sir Benjamin said, I presume there'll be an addendum for this page, uh, page for this video for the multitude of necessary corrections. Where is it to be found, please? <laughs> then you'll find it on the back of the sofa with everything else. Yeah, where it belongs, Ben, basically. Um, <laughs> In a bin. Okay. Now, again, it's not saying that it's something you would use necessarily to uh, rough down, but the three eight spindle gouge for roughing down not not so clever because it's not very it, it's not as robust and stable. 
but you could use the half inch quite easily, like you would a three eighths bolt gouge, for example, you could use that to rough down. And as I keep on reiterating, I'm only doing this to show you what can be done with it. Don't have to use it for that job. So we're gonna go and like with the skew and like with any um, operation like this, the faster the revs, the better, because you get a better cut and uh, safety glasses on. Okay. I'm oh, just going to see, is that too bright? Could we zoom out no, a wee bit? Um, Mike, we, we, zoom can't out see bit? Yeah, we can't see the tool rest. Well, we can. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. There we just go. Just a little bit. How's that? Zoom in when you're oh, doing it. There you go. That's, that's it. That's, that's better. Okay. And yeah, is this light on all right? Because it means I can see what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah put your okay, light on. Yeah, okay. yeah, we can deal with that. Okay. So I'm turning at around... 2000 RPM, making sure everything is locked down and tight. And obviously we're between centers. And how I'm gonna do it, and I'll do a uh, picture in picture in a minute, is basically the same uh, as with any tool, anchor, rub the bevel, lift the handle, engage the cut. The difference here is we're gonna be scooping. No pressure. Just work those corners away and work your way down the piece. That's the same thing you would do with a, a skew. And then literally just on the wing, run down, stop the lathe, which is something you might or might not do in your own time. And literally you can either start doing that again alex is asking what height do you set your tool rest alex I'm what sorry. you do is you you hold your tool on the wood and the tool needs to be um on the center of the wood or just above just above and your tool rest set accordingly there is no height because it will depend on your height distance from the wood size of the tool so many other factors that you can only do individually for yourself. Mm -hmm. <coughs> you can get the cutting edge on center or just above, that's fine. <coughs> if you stand as if you're about to cut, you hold the tool as, if, as you're going to hold the tool, lean that against the wood before you turn the lathe on. If that's oh. on or just a fraction above center, then that's mm -hmm. the right height for the tool rest. Yeah. This is a piece of, uh, it's either pine or larch. It's a very open wood, very soft wood. Not a very good surface, but all we're doing there is um, getting it to round. A rough now cut here, the you, if you use the wing, the right hand side of the wing here, anchor, bevel, and go really slowly. And do it one more time. I'm just stopping there for you to see the difference. I don't want to spend too much time on it, but you can see, hopefully the camera will pick it up. If yep. I turn the light off, it might be even better. It is much smoother here than it is at the rest. But all I was doing to begin with is to get rid of the corners and to get it to round. Now, the other way of doing it is you can do a push cut and literally the same thing, anchor, bevel, lift the handle, get your cut, and move along. And again, it's becoming smoother again. The most important, as you can see there, you can see a lot of tear out there where I was hacking away at it and not here. So you can, I'm not saying this is going to be the ideal scenario because normally on a spindle, all this is going to be turned away anyway. So all you're doing is really getting it to round. So yes, you can use the half inch and indeed you could use a three quarter. Um, you might just want to use a spindle roughing gauge, that's fine. Which is what I would normally use or the skew to get a nice finish.
<laughs> okay, so the next thing is beads and coves. Now, I am not a production turner, as most of you will know. Now, when you're doing a bead or a cove, the first thing you want to do is to get your make a V cut. Well, you can make a V cut with the spindle gouge. You would normally make it with your um, skew chisel, but you can do it with a spindle gouge. Now, the same applies to any tool. It will cut in the direction the bevel is pointing. So if you want to make a V cut here, okay, from this side there, providing, because people will say, well, it will skate. Well, yes, it will skate. But what you do is you make a very small light. I'm pushing that way, not with great force. That's one, or started. Now I'm going that way, direction. I'm virtually on center. I'm not dropping the handle here to make this cut. I'm using it almost like a skew. So let's put another one there. Now make sure you're pushing in the direction of the bevel. And if I want to make it bigger, I've now got something I can go against so I can refine it and make it as I want. So let's just say that's the bead we want to make. Now here, I'm going to change the camera to that one. How's that? Is that all right? Yeah. To show you what I'm doing, I'm going to start from the, at the middle. So if we make a pencil mark in the middle of the bead or virtually in the middle anyway, let's say there. Okay, so that gives us where we're going to start. Now the idea is to get it round coming down. Now what you do is start, and I said this last week with the skew, providing you're applying forward pressure, you're not going to come off the cut. So start and I'm pushing forward, now I'm lifting the handle, twisting, lifting the handle, twisting, lifting the handle, twisting. So that's one part of the bead done. Maybe not perfect, doesn't matter. You haven't um, finished yet. Now, you want to end up over this way here. You want to end up comfortable. So you lean into the cut, and again, anchor, bevel, pick up the cut, lift the handle, get your cut. Now, slight forward pressure, twist, lift, twist, lift. Keep an eye on the ghosting, twist, lift, twist, lift, and there. It's only a shallow bead, but as you can see, it is quite uniform. You can have it deeper, you can have it wherever. Now you've got this this middle bit here. Now you can spend a little bit of time fiddling about, but as I said with the skew chisel, to be honest with you, I don't think it's worth it. A little bit of 240. Gone. Don't have to drop the revs or anything. All you're doing is taking that high point off. So a little bit of um, abrasive. And it's perfectly symmetrical and gone. A little bit there, pencil mark. But I think you get the idea of what I'm saying. You can spend all, it's a good idea to practice, obviously doing it with your spindle gouge, but it's not essential because you've got that, um, you've got the equal sides, if you like, from the center and a little bit of 240. I mean, I spend about 10 seconds on it. it might take 20, but you've got it. You've got the idea. Any questions or anything to add from well, the- Joseph, Joseph, Joseph King oh. says, don't forget the county rings. No, I'll do that in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do that off camera, Joseph, if that's okay with you. <laughs> Because, uh, as Pete says, they really, they're very nice to look at, but they're quite pointless things, really. <laughs> they're nice well, for I, I say they're illegal. You can't do them anymore. Yeah. Mm. 
no, we've got to do a no. As I say, I'm not a I'm not a production turner, um, so there are other ways of doing it. So we've got to do a cove. Now, this if we use again, I've only used the three eighths spindle gouge here. Now, if you're going to do a cove, let's just get a, another bit of pencil and say we're going to do a cove. And there's the approximate middle of the cove. Okay. <laughs> so, again, it's a scooping motion. Now, if I'm going from, turn the lathe off, if we're going from right to left, we want to be on the left and move to the right to scoop to the middle. And conversely, if we're going from here to the middle, we want to be on the opposite side and move your body as opposed to your hands. You can do it that way, and I'll do it that way first with my hands extended, if you like. <clears throat> I'm not using my body. It can be done, but it's not such a smooth motion. Again, anchor, pick up the cut, lift the handle, keep bevel contact, lift the handle, to the middle. Now the idea is to go from there to there with the same, and I'm not perfect at this, I assure you, but I know what to do. I can't always do it. So now I'm going from left to right. I'm starting on the right, and I'm going to be moving that way, uh, not from my body, just with my hands. So I'll start again. I'm obviously moving my body a bit, but I, my hands are away from my body. And you can see I'm getting into, got to concentrate a bit more. Let's get to there. Fairly equal, but not, not as good as it could be. So can I actually get this one? I've got to get my, my body in motion now and lock everything in and scoop to the middle and the same here again not perfect but starting to Now that's with the body and I've corrected that um, mishmash, if you like, from doing it when your hands are out here. And all you're doing is literally, as you can see, I've got, only my thumb is putting pressure on it, no pressure whatsoever. Pick up the cut. And lift, but I'm moving my body and turn over. So, okay, we've got to get rid of this now. And what we will do is And the same thing applies here as applied with a bead. Uh, this is why it's important. I don't practice anywhere near enough. It's a little bit lopsided. But the point I'm making is that that little bit in the middle, you can actually get that exactly fine-tuned just with a little bit of sandpaper. But it's a cove. But the, the, the important thing to remember is, is use your body. Now, that is a bit steeper than that one. I could sit here and, you know, just, just make it a little bit less steep here. Lift the handle. And do the same over here. Just bring it in and blend it. Uh, 
And it's, that's not too bad. It's quite a, a deep cove, but the, what I'm trying to get over to you is that using your body as opposed to your hands out here, like I've said with a lot of tools, you want that bo your body to move together. It's much easier and it's a much better experience to get that curvature that you want. And again, the middle here, a little bit of a, a abrasive and that'll sort that out. All right, I'll stop there for a minute and see if there are any questions or if the lads would like to come in and add anything. Well, just to say, hey, Matt, Matt is in, Clint Edward Dances has joined us, Norman Green was there, the professor, James Crawford, Lucy Bundy Rowe, Nathan 4071's joined us. Good evening. Good evening, you. all of you. I'm, you're very welcome. Very welcome indeed. I'm going to have a quick poof. So, uh, as I keep Roy saying, I'm not Roy's the boys just joined us, so look out. Hello, Roy. How are you, mate? And welcome. Oh, back from the pub. <laughs> but the the I think the important thing to remember with like with all tools is that it's keep that bevel not rubbing but float the bevel use the bevel as a guide and do everything nice and slowly and if you're not happy at turning at 2000 rpm you can turn it to 1000 rpm and I'll I'll show you a little bit later on it's just the important thing is the speed at which your tool goes through the wood it must be relative to the rpm of the wood if you go slower if you've got rpms of a thousand you've literally got a half year traverse you've got to go half half as quickly as you would if it's going at two thousand so you know it, it still be done yuli's just okay. joined us and so is andy flanelli the posh firewood Hello, Shamoy, Andy, welcome, and welcome to everybody that I haven't said welcome to, of course. Um, right, okay, I can't actually oh, see with all my glasses. So we've gone to rough in the round, we've done beads and coves. I mean, any other shapes you want to be done can be done. Um, the detail gouge. I call it a detail gouge as opposed to um, just a spindle gouge because the spindle gouge, as I said, is at 40 degrees is it, and the I've got this at 30 degrees. Now, if you go to the overhead just very briefly, go keep the lads there. It's OK. Um, I can get in much, um, much smaller area without fouling that wood. Now, if I try to use the other one, as you can see, I'm already the the right wing. I better put it. Yeah, Person in the background, Mike. We can't see the cut. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, what I was going to do is there. That's it. Yeah. Right. I'll go back. To, uh, this is the the 40 degree, uh, and what will happen if I want to make this bead steeper, if you like, or I want to make the the V cut steeper. I'm immediately there, I'm touching the bead, and the same on this side. The bottom wing is touching the bead. So if I wanted to sharpen up a bit and make it a little bit more pronounced, with the 30 degree, I look, I'm not touching. I can go in there, and I can actually do that and I can get deeper than I can with the 45. I'm going to mess the bead up now but that's just to show you that this will get in much tighter corner. The ideal thing to use possibly for that would be the skew. I use this one quite a bit on uh, finials when you're doing fine work, etc. Um, some people say they have a problem with it skating. Well, a spindle gouge or any gouge, what will happen is if you. Right, okay. All I'm doing is presenting it incorrectly, putting a bit of pressure, and it's skating, okay? It's going that way and if I was going this way it would skate back the other way okay what you have to do is to start your cut now very similar to the V cut if you like if you you can either 
put your, it's not cheating. You can put your thumb behind to start your cut and then you twist. So if you wanted to go in there and say we want to take that down, you've now got this shoulder as a guide. So you're okay. You want to go that way, what you do is start with a very, very small nick, twist, you've got that bevel, you've got the cut, you can go through. If you don't do that and you go in quickly, you're immediately starting to skate. But if you just do that nice and lightly, twist, <coughs> you're, right, you're now floating the bevel and in you go. Or you can take a very, very light cut, but you still must just twist that bevel slightly to do the cut. So I think somebody last week mentioned during the skew demo that, you know, how do you stop your gouge from skating? Well, that is, that's the result of the skating. We're back to the 40 degree now, just using the wing, we'll clean that up. And providing you get that start, now if you look at the surface on there, it's quite smooth. There's a bit of tear out there, but it is, as I say, soft. It's either larch or pine, one of the two. But providing you get that cut started, you and you keep forward momentum it's not going to skate if you jam it in it's going to skate and and that's just uh, just the physics just the physics of it <coughs> so that's covered skating um right f cons joined he said long time no see mike good evening and welcome and nice also benjamin asks do yes. you find a 40 degree gouge more vibratory when hollowing? Um, I'll do some hollowing later. Um, I tend, you can use a 3 8. Pete and I have had this discussion um, in the past, you know, uh, up, up to about sort of three inches, 3 8 spindle gouge is fine. Sure, you can go deeper, but why would you? Because um, you're going to lose that stability. I very often use my half inch spindle gouge. Um, which is not um, as flimsy, let's put it that way. And that does the job quite well. And I can go down to three inches, three and a half, four inches, if I should so want to with that. Um, but no, I, I don't, f the only, only reason it starts to get jittery is because the distance it's hanging over the um, tool rest as you get deeper. Uh, and, I might be wrong in saying this, but I don't think the difference between 40 degrees, 45 degrees is going to make any difference to its stability. All it's going to do is going to allow you to go round the corner at the bottom a little bit easier. But I must be honest, on a, on a goblet, whatever happens with a goblet normally or a box even, I will always use a negative rate scraper to smooth everything off and get rid of that little nib in the middle. Um, Sometimes I'm lucky and I get rid of it with the gouge, but sometimes you have a little nib at the bottom, proud nib, and get rid of that with a negative rate scraper as you're smoothing at the walls anyway. But I don't think it affects, unless the other lads have a different opinion, I don't think that, that the angle of the bevel has any relation, any relativeness to the stability. I don't think no, so. I don't find it does. Um, Size of your tool mainly. Yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I probably wouldn't use my 30 degree for hollowing, but as I said, I've got a mm -hmm. two mil bevel on that. That was no. uh, yeah, Cindy no. drove the grind. Yeah, um, no, no. So I, I wouldn't use that for hollowing, but if I had a 30 degree with a full bevel, I probably would if it happened to be in my hand. Yeah. Nigel oh, Warren okay. asked me about the, well, he's agreed with you, the quarter inch spindle gauge is pretty useless. Is yeah, I'll leave it. Any, I'll any of us here won't use it. I have one. It's in yeah, a box yeah. somewhere. I don't use it now. I have typed in the chat. Actually, I do use one very occasionally on very, very fine finials yeah. when I want to get right in the corner. 
Me too. From the Same sewer. as Jerry. Yeah, exactly. It, it, it lives up here and it won't come down again now for until next Christmas. Um, it, it, it's if you've got a, a spindle, you've got a spindle gouge, uh, 30 degrees or 25 degrees, whatever. But to be quite honest with you, if you've got to do something that fine, you take a skew to it. Yeah. Um, because then you can get in really. And if you have a bevel like Pete does, and I think the other two guys use 15 degrees as well. I, I use 20. It's tw no, I, I, I said 20. last week it was 25. It's actually 21 degrees is is what I use. Because that I feel happy with that, you know, it does the job. But I use um, 20, 20 degrees as well, Mike. Yeah. So, but I mean, I, I, again, I keep reiterating this: it, nothing is set in stone. It, it, it's not a. It's uh, it, it has to be. You have to experiment, um, and you know, I spent twelve years experimenting, and I'm still changing things. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's. Uh, yeah, I disagree. I believe the angles have to be perfect to the seventh decimal place at least. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, well, that, that's not accurate enough for me, <laughs> uh, unfortunately. I, I do want to. I do want to seem conceited to the viewer, um, but I, I I go to twelve decimal places, and I don't round up or down. <laughs> it is exact. I mean, it is exact. I mean, the vernier that I use for that <laughs> cost, cost about eight thousand pound. But it's worth it because you want to be exact. Of course, if you, you know? yeah, if you're using this, if you're using the skew mic with your left hand instead of your right, obviously the other wing is probably ground uh -huh. a whole quarter of a you... degree less because oh. of the where you stand. I hope exactly. none of you are listening to this rubbish. Well, if you're listening to it, take no notice of it, as you shouldn't take notice of anything that we say, really. But um, yeah, it it is a very personal thing, and I know it sounds very boring, and it sort of sounds like a cop out, but it isn't. Everybody has their own preference. Um, and any any uh, angle is a not a bent. It, it is a starting point for you to work from. Um, I don't know if it happens now, but years ago, um, all tools came from the factory, uh, not sharpened, ready for use, nope. which a lot of manufacturers do now, and they come at the 45 degrees because that is the optimum cutting angle when you when you put an edge up to a piece of wood 45 degrees is the optimum cutting angle but that doesn't take into account your height the height of your lathe how you stand your turning style etc cetera, etc cetera. so the odd two or three degrees four or five degrees even with one person might not suit another because of the way they turn simple as that and really and truly if you get the job done with a certain bevel that is the right bevel for you um okay. jeff Horning said a long time ago on one of his uh, videos once you've handed your money over for your new tool whatever it happens to be hmm. it's yours yes <laughs> do you like so exactly. you've got whatever angle suits you, you like. on it because you own it it's yours hmm. and if you uh, find fairness, you are getting yeah if you find you are getting problems it is skiing or it is doing something else. Change the angle slightly, just slightly, yeah. and have another go. Or yeah. change your point. angle of approach. Change your angle. Yeah. Because the, yeah. the thing with skating, um, it's, <laughs> it, with a skew, a skew skates, but it skates a lot more violently. Um, especially, as we said last week, a lot of people who are not happy with the skew will hold on to it white knuckle, which is going to exacerbate that catch anyway. I had a couple of catches. One, I think one was possibly on purpose. The other two or three happened. And one of them happened on a piece that was seven, about six, seven inches out from the chuck. And I was facing off and I got a catch and it just, it didn't do anything. It didn't unseat it. It stayed central. If I'd been holding on for grim death, the forces it would try to exert to chuck that skew out of its line of uh, cut would have been far greater. And it would have definitely got it off center and worst scenario chucked it out the chuck so a lot of problems can be um lessened by not holding your tools tightly firmly but not tightly um that's my firm belief well, and i'm, I'm guilty of it myself. Came in, uh, last yeah. week and, and yeah avoid the death grip yep it totally. not only does it exacerbate the catches it lessens your flexibility if you're rigid you can't be it's not as easy and it's virtually impossible yep. to get nice smooth strokes you can't uh, be fluid. Will, exactly 
And it, whatever anybody says, if you've never done a live, it's, it, it is a different scenario when you're doing something with people watching. Not that you want to be do it right all the time, but you're thinking of other things as opposed to zoning in, pardon yes. me, zoning in 100% on the job in hand. But when you're on your own, that's what you're doing. Um, but the main thing to remember is relax and if you're not happy with how things are going don't try and correct it on the fly stop the lathe stand back and start again pick up the curtain start again and analyze where you've gone wrong because skating is a really annoying thing especially when you you know you've done all the hard work if you like you've done all the and you're just doing that final cut and it's the same on a bowl i suppose i'm not a bowl turner i can turn bowls and it's happened to me on bowls as well, but it happens on spindles, on, on goblets and stuff. You do a final cut and you get a skate and it, it's gone and you've got to, you can either repair it or you've got to start again, you know, so rather. Thank you. Well, Robert Lerner says, best advice is to get, not to get fixated on getting the angle on the gouge until you've tried it a while. Exactly. Yes yeah, and no. Yes, Go on in. the angle is not that important. Get the angle that suits you. No, if you've got two gouges and you're swapping over from one to the other, having the same angle on both is helpful because your feet stay in the same position. Your yep. angle of lean to the tool rest stays the same. Yep. So once you've decided on 40, 42 and a half, 43, 45, whatever angle. Stick with it. Try and stick with that angle for. Yep everything unless unless there's a reason not to and the reason not to would be bowl gouges you would have different angles for different depth of, of bowl but that's, that's assuming I, yeah, that's assuming yeah. of course that everybody uses some sort of um some sort of uh, jig to, to well to yeah but even if you don't because use jig, those that hand still... sharpen the angle could change slightly on every time you sharpen it yeah, but you, you still aim at the same. Flexible. Mm. Yeah, but if, if if for example, what Pete's trying to say, I think, and you know, this sort of discussion oh, yeah. and any 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 adding from the comments is welcome as well. What Pete's trying to say is, if for example, you've got two, I mean, I've I've got double-ended gouges, right? So that that is a forty-degree angle, and rather than go and sharpen, I can spin it round, and there's another forty-degree angle. No, I could have put the thirty degree on that end um which would be handy but if i wasn't thinking then all of a sudden i'm faced with 30 degrees it's not a massive change but it could make that little difference uh 10 degrees you know it's not the end of the world but once you get into your rhythm if everything stays the same then your rhythm is going to carry on you have to make micro adjustments for different well, you make micro adjustments all the time I know, because of the wood, but I mean, um, yeah, well, I yeah it's, it's just a question of keeping the, the <laughs> keeping the flow the same. Um, yeah, it's handy. It's not necessary, it but it's handy. Yeah. So as far as that's concerned, beads and coves, and again, advice from me or my suggestion always is, this this wood is is sort of uh, well, it's free stuff actually. I just picked it up. It's off cuts from somebody, and it's very light. It's very um, open grained. It's I say larch or pine. I cut the knots out of it earlier on. You can you can play with that, and if you get a good finish, you know a decent finish on that you'd go in somewhere towards the correct tool, tool control and your angle of attack. But it, it doesn't matter if you mess that up, mess it up as many times as you want, because that's what that sort of thing is a practice piece. Don't try it on a decent piece of wood because it's, it's, it's not cost effective. You're wasting money and it's no point. Do your practicing and it's all to do with muscle memory. Uh, and believe it or believe it not, I, I know I bang on because my friends here say that I do bang on a lot. Brian um, does a bit. <laughs> well, All right, Brian. I'll, I'll click it away, Brian. Look, I can do it. Look, look, see, you're gone. Yeah. <laughs> quick, as quick as that, mate. He doesn't like it when you tell him the truth, boys. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll tell him what I could do. I, I could actually just... He's gone now. Thank God for that, I heard everybody say. Yeah. But no, it, it practices... Um, 
And believe yeah. it or not, for, for this life, I went through two or three spindles just to get back into it because I don't do coves and beads every day. I don't do anything every day. I, I mix and match a lot, so I don't actually get a lot of time on each thing. Um, where the advantages of having 12 years under my belt, it's not necessarily made me a good turner, but it's made me know what I've got to do and what I know what I have to achieve uh, and how to get there. And it's just practice. And after an hour or so messing around, you feel comfortable, you know, uh, as you're going to be. But you can't expect to to do it right if you don't practice it. You might get it right once out of 10, but you want to get it right nine times out of 10. And that's only going to come with the more you do, the easier it becomes uh, and the more uh, at home you feel doing you what you're doing. Yeah, that's the word, confidence. Okay. Um, i to pick up on one quickly there. Um, yeah. Gaz has put in rust on construction timber is okay to practice on. Yes, with the caveat that it shouldn't be treated. Yeah. No. Um, no. Treated timber. I mean, if you've got breathing apparatus on, it's fine, but it's best avoided. Nigel Oram wants to know if you're still sharpening on the Robert Sorby, or do you use no. grinding wheel? I use grinding wheel now. Um, I said this last week. Robert Sorby, the Pro Edge, is a great bit of kit. No argument there <laughs> at all. For repeatability, I should think mm. it's possibly the best thing out there. Um, I just wanted. Um, not just my videos, but I wanted to experiment with various things. And there were certain things that, that I found restrictive. If the belt was another half an inch wider or an inch wider, it wouldn't be so restrictive. And if the motor wasn't in the place it's in, it wouldn't be so restrictive. However, um, I went back to CBNs um, and I'm happy with them. I do miss the repeatability. Uh, so I've had to cobbled together some things for me that work i just slot one out put it in and it's there and it's as repeatable as the sorby but it's not all in one unit as the sorby is but it's a great bit of kit i'd never knock it i'd never knock it if i could justify it i think i'd have one of each to be honest with you but i just can't justify that because um you know it's i could justify not, it and got the face yeah, yeah, well, that's from, another from thing. Uh, you know, yeah, no space. it's yeah, but you can, It's not. What I would say I would do is possibly my scrapers would be on the grinder, um, and I do my gouges on the sorby, because I just yeah. uh, find I just you know, slot it in a way to go. I have this. I've got a system here that is virtually that way. Um, I bought a couple of extra. Um, I, I cut some of the bar off and I've made some, you know, different things that work for me for what I need. Um, but it can't be stressed enough that the Sorby provides you everything you need to a point. And I think everybody will, everybody on here who's used the Sorby will say there are a few restrictions. They're not restrictions that are going to stop you buying it, but um, it doesn't give you as much flexibility as the CBNs. That's just me. Yeah, I have the equivalent of the Sorby, which is the Axminster uh, Ultimate Edge one, which yes. is a little bit, um, uh, so I say, more friendly. You can reverse yeah. it, and you can you can reverse the belt, and you can, you know, it's uh, and it's got more more room to the motor. Whereas, yeah, that, that's, that's the biggest thing with that. But it's I still use CBM wheels. I haven't used this, mm. the the uh, Axminster for a long time now. No. It it's it's what you you know it, 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 it it's what you're happy with but yes the the, the pro edge is, is good there's no argument about it um, okay um, I'm just gonna do Rob's one. asking Rob from Clingsport's yep. asking the Hello, CBN electroplated wheels do they give you an option to replate them I don't think they do I'm not sure I don't think so no I don't. not in our budget unless you know, did, think. unless you know different Rob I mean they're not that expensive anyway really are they not no they're not when i um, first got cbns they were they were over 150 quid, quid each yeah 200 it, quid yeah. a piece from the tool post mm. and that was but they've gone down quite a bit now yeah you can pick up eight inch wheels now for about 120 quid 110. Mm. that's the two inch wide because you can get thinner well, ones a question from there. adrian olsen he said uh what is your most tailored tool ones that you created just for your own specific use. 
Um, mm. Wow. What is my most yeah, what's tailored, your most tailored tool? tool? Tailored. Well, I think mine's prob probably the one I've got is, is an Allen key, which is ground down to do a recess behind a thread. I because the oh, right. price of the actual yeah. tool, yeah. I've seen no reason to buy that. Yeah. I'm using it. Yeah. That's so that for making lamps, because I don't make enough lamps to make it worth buying the full 80 yeah. quid worth of kit. Yeah. That's one I've made. That's um, mine, I think. Which and there's a video on that, Pete, in there? There is a yeah. video on that, yeah. yeah. That, that's just Anybody wants to make, make lamps, drill, drilled lamps up through the middle for the wiring, Pete's what made a tool damn. rather than paying out a huge amount for one. What size is it drills up, Pete? It's a, that's actually a 10 mil. I want yeah, no. an 8 mil, but I haven't found one yet. Is it an auger? Or, or, they or sell them. I, I got that one cheap, so you know, extra two mil. Who cares? Is yeah. it an auger yeah. bit or is it a drill bit? It's an, it's an auger bit. It's um, an auger. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's an auger bit, and I've left the thread on the end. Have you? But I start. I start with a Jacobs, and just start with a, a short hole. Right. Okay. Then I feed this so in, thread... and I, I let the thread pull it through, and I just hold it hold it steady. Yeah. No hmm. problems at wandering off or anything, no. It will wander a quarter of an inch or so over a 15, 16 inch piece. Yeah. Will make any difference. Um, depends on the grain. That, you know. Yeah. But um, I always, it won't, it won't I always break drill up the first and then recenter it on the, the hole. Mm. So then once I've roughed it down, then my hole is bang in the middle. Mm. But uh, I've got a number of things. I've got ground Allen keys as Terry's got and yeah. There's other things that I've put together to solve problems. Yeah, I had um when I started I bought a dovetail tool for my dovetails, which I repurposed after a while. Um and then after watching a video by Phil Irons, I got the idea from him. Um I made that tool. I took it away because Pete was banging on, so I didn't want to upset him <laughs> and interrupt. Oh, um, that is most, probably my most tailored tool for use. Um, that's just for um, dovetails and the angle. That part, like uh, cannon, you mean. If, like yeah, uh, no, 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 I, I, uh, no. No, uh, sorry, a tenon. Beg your pardon. Um, yeah, yeah. This part here is level, is uh, parallel to the headstock or 90 degrees to your bedways. Yeah, and and you, you just took. nibble, yeah. nibble away, and you get a seventy perfect. degrees, or whatever the dovetail happens to be. That's mm -hmm. fifteen degrees, whatever your dovetail on your jaws um, needs to be. And then for doing uh, and doing a mortise, I've just got an old half-inch skew, which has Rob from Clingsport is asking degree there. Uh, Rob from Clingsport is asking, I was wondering for those who have used a metal uh, working lathe, well, what was known as a knuddling tool, would that work on wood? Uh, it will. Um, on yeah. it hardwood, yeah. Um, I'm very, it'll have to be very hard there is, wood, yeah. There is a it's version rough. which um, yeah. is sold for use on wood, which is, I believe, just fun. exactly a knurling tool, just a wider pattern to yes, yeah. with the grain. And, it, and a deeper yeah. pattern. I yeah, the knurling tool on metal does work. I've used I, I did a five year apprenticeship on metal turning, so yeah. If you've got the Sorby spiraling tool, then you just yep. do it in both directions and you've got a knurling pattern. You've got your knurling. Correct. Yep. Which I've actually got. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. This is um, my burning wire. Actually, that one's a bit clearer. Nah, it's not going to focus. No, it won't pick it up. No, no, no. I've done a knurling pattern on that, but. Um, that's just because it's, it's a because piece of what could. I was playing with, and I later <laughs> use it as a handle because, you know. Yeah. No, and it lasts well. I bought six. I, I bought six guitar strings ten years ago for my um, burning wire, and I still got five left. That one is still. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it just doesn't doesn't wear out, you know. Or you could pay fifty quid, is it, for the. Um, Easy wood tools do one as well, don't they? With nice, nice posh handles and yeah. Woodwork learners asking, uh, which tool do you dislike the most apart from the captive ring tools? <laughs> <laughs> um, I quite like captive ring tools. Very nice. I've, I've got, got one. one. I think. I've got yeah, one. I've got one. 
Oh yeah, uh, each each tool for the job. It's it's you know it's it's oh, like I've got a capture yeah. ring tool somewhere, but it's not in my. E Fergus, I have. The mine's here somewhere. Don't know where. There it is. Oh, I tell you what, I had two. That's right. I got one as a captive ring tool, and this one I repurposed for a mushroom tool. I can actually undercut mushrooms. Yeah, undercut. So you know, uh, the thing is, when you buy tools, when you start turning, you oh, I must have this. Must have. I tell you what, the best one I've done actually was following off uh, Pat oh. Carroll. Was an old spindle gouge and making it into a beading tool. Yeah. Not the full bead. So I find the beading tools, if you buy a beading tool, it, it leaves a very wide gap for my yeah, eye. Quite aggressive, between, it? yeah, between each one. But these, you can do like half beads and you can make a very tight together, providing you present it to the wood at 90 degrees so if you're going around the bend you've got to keep on altering where you're but yeah that that was a one of the, the nice the, the most useful ones because that's a standard beading tool and there's a very it's quite wide in between each bead goes down quite a way you know the deep beads <laughs> todd glinkle has asked a very stupid question oh god do you have a preferred brand of masking cake? No, Todd. Michael can mess up any brand. Any brand. I do actually. Yeah, but my, my, my favourite is um, that one. Stuck. The white one, is it? Yeah. Stuck. And uh, Steve Perkins is uh, admiring my point. Um, mm. And I've Steve got one here as well. Some, Brian's uh, got one, I think. So. We'll, doing some uh, all three of us. In a moment, because he's got a metal working lathe. And, all uh, three of us couldn't stick sitting <laughs> and wait for this long without alcohol. That's not true. I, I like oh. Mike. Stop you! Stop you abusing Mike. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, Terry. It's an easy way to get out. Oh, he's just on the left. left comment. He's gone. He's gone. gone on the left, left. <laughs> okay, guys. Um, a little bit of a post. Uh, what I intend to do now, unless you've got any other suggestions, um, is to quickly do just to show you that it can be done. Is a uh, a pommel and. Uh, Again, as I say, I'm not oh, a spindle turner. Why would you use a spindle gouge instead of a skew? I don't know, but you can. Uh, Rob's just saying he's surprised no one sells blank tool blanks for people that want to make their own. They do. You just buy a yes. lump of HSS and uh, mm. grind it to suit yourself. Yep. Um, or if you're using screw-on cutters, have I got one here? Yep. I was watching a video today. Guy made his own um, B and Q mild steel sawby cutter. Perfect. Um, ground tapped and threaded. Job done. You could do, make um, <clears throat> texturing tools and stuff as well with yeah, just ordinary mild yeah. steel. You can you can make your own. For, I mean, <laughs> if you go on to YouTube, you want to make a tool. Go on to YouTube. Yep. Put it in, and somebody will have made it. I'll I'll show you, and show you how to, you know, so unless you're a tool junkie. Ian okay. Lee says he's got trouble when he uses the Simon Hope quick release handles. The gouge is turning when using the wings of the gouge too, inside, too the, much, inside the quick too, release. Too much pressure uh, on the tool, Ian, and not enough bell. Yeah, I haven't actually had that problem, and I've been using, and I'm not, you know, <laughs> if, if I said yes, it will happen. The time it used to happen to me was when I was, as I will show later on, not oh, twisting, right. is when you're just doing a like a goblet or something and you're doing a depth hole. If you put too much pressure on it, you got you start to get vibration and it might loosen. But um, I, I don't have a problem with it. As Brian says, you're possibly putting too much pressure on it. Because especially a spindle gouge. The only time it ever happens to me is when I put yeah. too much pressure or, or yeah. <coughs> if you use too much wing. Yeah. Too much wing at the time, yeah. Uh, it's just too much the pressure on the edge of the tool. It will cause it to I mean, it's not. A, a spindle gouge is really, I mean, in, in the States, they call it a detail gouge. And I think actually that is a better description of it, really, because you're not using the hog <laughs> away wood. You're using it to create fine finer shapes than you can with let's say a bowl gouge or a spindle roughing gouge 
Um, so it's used for finer work, and that finer work does not require any pressure. What it does require is good tool presentation and good tool control. Um, and if you let the wood, and well, I'm guilty of it, here. I'm guilty of it. Oh, I'm talking too much again. Yeah, I'm guilty of it as well. No, no. <laughs> what I'm saying is you've got to you've got to um, approach everything lightly. Um, if whatever yeah, you, if, if you've got um, the quick release handles, they have advantages and disadvantages. Um, but to be honest, if you're putting that much pressure on that it's turning the tool in the handle and the handle's up tight in the first place, mm. then you're probably over gripping on a standard handle to um, compensate for that problem. So one thing I'll add to that is you don't need to tighten them up like white knuckle either. No, you don't. So if you if you are actually tightening it up too much over time, that could possibly wear the inside. I don't know. <coughs> we I don't see, you know. Anthony so, Green's ask, has anybody used the asymmetric grind that Richard Raffin uses? I have tried it. Uh, it doesn't give me any major he, he, benefit, so I don't know. He likes to use it, but, you know. Yeah. Again, it's a personal thing. He likes yeah. it because it gives him more wing, if you like. But I mean, well, Richard I, Raffin is a guy, he, he will turn an eight inch bowl with a half inch spindle gauge, not a bowl yeah. gauge. Uh, the eight eight, he will, yeah. Eight eight, yeah. He yeah, uses the bowl gauge in the end. Which is yes. absolutely fine for the experienced turner, but I, yeah, of course yeah. it is. I really don't think you should do it on YouTube because. We wouldn't advocate you trying it unless you were really <laughs> experienced at it. Yeah. yeah. No. You've got to listen to the sounds. You've got to know the, you've got to know the music of the wood to do that. Mm. Um, I'll be, on, be honest with you, when I saw Richard do that, I thought, right, you know, maybe here we go. go. <laughs> Have a go, yeah. I did it, no problem at all. But I'm thinking as I'm doing it, why am I using a half inch spindle gauge? Well, I can just pick up a three eight small gauge. You know, yeah. um, right. it, it, it's, it's like this today. You don't have to use these tools to do what I'm doing, but it's just to show they can, it can be done, you know. Um, they're, they're quite versatile. Okay, let, let's. Adrian um, Olsen said, uh, "Why is Mike's yes, workshop always so neat and tidy?" It's uh, not. Adrian, it's it not. Up. It's green screen. Mike doesn't really exist. We made him up. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm really. I'm just a, an avatar. Of our really. imaginations. I'm avatar of Pete's imagination. And I don't I'm, know how anybody could imagine that. I really. No. <laughs> I'm depressed. I feel sorry. <laughs> I feel sorry. For Bye, me. Brian. Right, okay. I'm going <laughs> to shut the guys up now. I'll shut them I won't shut them up, but I'll shut, shut them out. Shut them out. Shut them out. Okay. That's a good idea. I can so get back to my drink now. Mike, can you do, uh, do me a little sphere with um, a pommel on the end of it? A little sphere, sphere? with a pommel? Yeah. I don't know what you mean. Well, I see a sphere, and I want to see that sphere coming in, like the top of a new post. Have a sphere. He wants, a, he wants a ball on the end. He wants a ball on the end with a fillet or a, a, a firkin. Oh, I don't and know then what you're talking about. Um, I'll have a go. But uh, you know, it, for the people watching, I don't know what they're talking about, but I'll have a go. Okay. So, because I don't do these sort of things. So, what you want me to do first? Do a sphere. This, this, a little sphere. Don't use that end with the crack on near the tailstock. Don't use that end. It's got a crack. That's a small crack. That'd be all right. Yeah, be, that'll turn away. But all right. Okay. Yeah, that should be all right. That's fair okay, then. so... Well, you a two-inch sphere do... at the end. Is that a two-inch blank? Yeah, it's better. Yeah, about two inch. Inch and a half well, ball on the end, a, then. An inch and a half ball on the end. So, well, and fill okay. It. So, you want the ball to start here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on the end yes okay let's try that first this is going to be fun yep for us anyway mm. that's that bit gone so so basically you're just making two big beads that's what you're doing a big bead about that <clears throat> That's one bike there, man. Now, Adrian's got this entirely wrong. He said, Mike, do what you want. It's your show. Oh, Adrian, it's our job to get Mike not. into trouble. That's what we're here for. We're, we're, we're contracted. 
<laughs> Ian Lee says, okay, I'll try relaxing, guys. That's it. Yeah, uh, you relax. Just, just like lighter cuts, Ian, and uh, take your time. Don't don't rush at it. Apply a bit of finesse rather than brute force. <clears throat> and if, if that doesn't work, get in touch with Simon. Because you may have a you may have a, a dodgy collar. I don't I don't know. There was a question about earlier about Christmas trees. Ah, do you know what? What? I used it for roughing down, didn't I? You did. Yeah. yeah. Try to sharpen it. I'll do the CBN wheel with you, boy. Uh, Ryan Holt, Ryan Holt says, says uh, I've been making some Christmas trees using peeling cuts and a, and scraping with a skew. Is there a way to use a spindle guide for you for this? Yeah, yeah you can turn a Christmas tree easily with a, with a spindle guide. Yeah. yeah. You can turn a spindle gauge with a, um, sorry, turn a Christmas tree with a roughing gauge. With well, a roughing gauge. Yeah. yeah. Totally depends on the shape of your Christmas tree. Yeah, you could easily use your skew for that. Or your spindle gauge, sorry. And, uh, Nigel put in a comment, he says, uh, hopefully Ian's not using the red top when he should be using the blue top on the quick release. I think uh, he does, Andy. That's true. But it kind of wobbles about if you don't use the correct one. So you see what Mike's doing here. He's, um, it's effectively just a big bead. Yep. It's still a bit wide in the middle at the moment, but he's working on that. Yeah. To make it more ball shaped. Find the easiest way to make a sphere is cut it off at 45 degrees in the corners first, and then just cut off the, sh the corners again and the corners yeah. again. You'll get a you'll get a almost perfect round. Mm -hmm. I find the easy way to make a bead is to actually turn a flat um, spindle, measure it, yeah, stick that measure on on the two ends of the ball, mm. and then find the middle of that. Uh, work towards it. Make that your bead. Yeah. Um, but, Get your diameter first. Is my I'm just one. doing this by eye. Yeah, no, you're doing, and you're, we can you're see doing that, doing Mike. You did a good job. No, I'm not asking for praise. I'm just saying I didn't I mark didn't, anything I didn't, out. No, I, I did see Ish at the end, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's pointless asking us for praise, Mike. <laughs> yeah. Uh, what's this? I see, Mike, uh, you're not listening to him. You're doing a, a, an ellipse. Hang on, Adrian. It's not. A, it's an ellipsoid now, but it will be a sphere when he's finished. It's getting <clears> Susie, <throat> Susie, what's Susie's question? Bring it down a bit. Could maybe one of you do a live on how to make all sorts of Christmas decorations? Yes. Pete's yeah, good at that. He loves Christmas. Uh, I, I will do that next year. I did <laughs> one in March. Because he does his in March. Well, if I, I do a live next Christmas. Sunday, I'll do one. I'll do one yeah, next I'll, Sunday. You you can do a Christmas bobble. I'll do a Christmas tree tomorrow. Oh, it won't take five minutes. You going to do a Christmas tree now, are you, Mike? No, I can't. He's doing a he's doing a, a new post at the moment. I thought he was going to change that into a star and put the tree on the bottom then. Don't say it's thank heavens they don't have earworms at work. It would be so brutal if you So, what, what do you want to do now? <laughs> right, you're going to take your ball in now, where it joins the the other side. Take your, take, take, so go down right there. Go that cut way. Down there. Yeah. yeah, cut down in there. Quite, now, right Terry, down. I'll tell you what to do. Oh, go on. Give, give us the um, square pommel that you were going to do. And then blend right, that So, into with the square pommel, pommel like, like with the skew, the yeah. um, cut yeah, is so in the go. direction of the bevel. So, say we so go a square here. pommel, not a round pommel. Yeah, so you've got, got, you go got to have your gauge right round. Square pommel. 
I don't know what you, you got to go right in straight. Into there? Straight? No, yeah, but you got to be oh, vertical. You gotta, yeah, that's it. you got to go oh, straight that in. Way. Ah. Yeah, yeah, square straight pommel. In. Yeah. Straight in. You're not going to get a square pommel now because he's far too much taken out. Well, no, he can come well, back to do the square pommel because he needs a... You can have a little bit of post between the sphere and the pommel. Oh, okay. Right. Well, right, okay. that for his firkin, doesn't he? <laughs> now, last week on the skew, cancel. Mike was um, doing the square pommel, and, and we discussed the fact that it's easier to do it with a skew. Mm -hmm. um, I couldn't agree more. Which it is, but Mike um, said at the start of this, he wanted to do it with a skew leave, as yeah. well. Just leave to show that, that any tool no. can do pretty much anything. No, leave, leave that bit you've got down the bottom of the ball now, it will be your fillet, that, the little fillet. So just come in yeah. square now, all the way down to you've got your fucking. From here. Your TT. Yeah. Yeah, come in square. Come in square, square, not 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 down at an angle, square. Oh, square. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah square, 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 yeah. square, square, square. in there. Find the gauge. So Ninety, 90 degrees straight in. The blank. That's bad. Stop. And right, again. That's it. Yeah, keep going. Yeah. Go back till you got square edge. Oh, and don't don't get a catch. No, oh, good, well, good. no, you must get a catch, otherwise it's no fun. That's All true. Right. I'll make it a round pommel now, then. Do you want to go in here? Is what you want yeah. right. yeah, Straight yeah. in. You close the face a wee bit. There you go. That's better. There you go. Right. We'll pretend it's square now. Switch it off. Let's have a look. Oh, we've got, we've got a bucket there, isn't it? So we can make a round, round to that. Yeah, you can now, yeah. <laughs> you can, make now, yeah, round yeah round you can make a round now. Thing. Just a round yeah. pummel into that. Perfect. Now, yeah. Perfect. Down, down to that square. Yeah. Down to that yep. square, yeah. Don't forget to close your face as you go down. It's coming the other way. Okay. It's not really showing so well on the camera, but there's an awful lot of micro changes to this tool as Mike's going through this cut. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Keep going rain. Keep going rain. And that's the there, look at that look. There we go. That's the important that joint be. edge that he's just done there. No, there's a bit of a shoulder. I haven't finished that yet. That's not bad looking, Mike, I have to say. That's right. Yeah. Oh, you. look, it's not really. <laughs> that's, oh, it's not, the, it's not the, quite right. The, the ball is that's not... The no, man. The ball is not right by any means, but I, I make no excuses there. When I do a sphere, I mark it out. And as Terry says, yeah. I do... Um, I nibble away in, in straight lines, if you like. Yeah. Yeah. Take, take the corners off, scan it at 45 degrees, yeah. and then and just blend it together. It's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. And to be or, honest, if you're not making or get the five or six of them, they don't have to look the same, do they? <laughs> well, Steve, Lilly, Steve Lilly has just said, it's nice to watch someone do a good job. I'd be looking in my shed for that ball end by now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so really, really, that should um, go down just one more, one more bit. It is actually quite hard to imagine a ball when the... You've got it on the end of a post, so it doesn't go all the way around to the end of the ball. Yeah. Mm. You've got to imagine that in in the negative, because you don't actually cut that far. There but... you go. That's it. That's better. <clears throat> no, it's not. It's still. No, you've got you've got an undercut now. Yeah, you've got to come back, clean it up. That's it. My nice sharp it's edge. Now. Just to take that off now. Close the face and gauge. Edge. Close the face. Just close the face. Close it. And the point of this is you I can do this with a spindle gauge, but it's a damn sight yeah. easier with a skew. Yes, it is. but the point is you can do it. I mean, the actual yeah. round over there is is quite it's very well, very clean. Um, clean as even. Uh, and um, <laughs> yeah, Alex has just said, "Oh, so scraping it round isn't the right way to do it?" Then 
No, it's not. No, not really, Alex. No. <laughs> not when you see that that finish that finish cut there on that palm as it come round. This, that is class that, finish, isn't it? That see, is you know, a, a, as good as the skew. You don't yeah, need yeah. grit. That's just the touch now with the finest sample every way. Yeah. Every the as ball, as the ball, as I say, I was I was really just up up for it. I um, I've it. never done a sphere, a proper sphere, um, without cutting it. Marketing. Um, first, I'm just going off camera for a second. Oh, and no, I didn't use the sphere jig on this. Um, it is ages ago, it shows, Mike. But there, yeah, you know, there, there's a sphere that I did out of oak, and that That's was done actually, by that was done actually by pretty, hand. Good, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, pretty good, and it, it rolls fairly stably. Anyway, as I say, there's no point. I've, I could possibly piddle about with that and get it a bit more spherical, but that's no, the most important thing. It's the um, the junctions that are the important bit, and yeah, yeah. They're, they're shown there. <laughs> Round pumble. right? Good. So that just proves it can be done. Not extreme. That's a nice bit of colour there. Look, yeah, a bit of colour. Yeah. Um, ben, ben, okay. suggests, ben suggests that cutting a half circle template and some kind of some kind yes. of car or something is helpful. It as can well. be very helpful. It does. Yeah. It can, yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely. I'm now putting on the reason I'm putting this on. Ooh. It's spalted beach. And the reason I'm putting it on is as follows. I feel a goblin coming on. No, we're going to do end grain and hollowing. Oh. End grain hollowing and cleaning up your end grain. Do back hollowing or not? I'm no. back hollowing, but not the proper back hollowing because I can. Oh. I just. I've never practiced it. I have practiced it, but I can't do it. Yeah. I no, just okay. use the left-hand part of the wing, and that's what I've used since I've been virtually since I've been turning. Me too. I have tried it. Um, it is very effective, but Be it's quick. also but it's difficult. It's also very easy <clears throat> to um, to mess it up. <laughs> and, and to be honest with you, so it takes longer than doing it. To, yeah. Back hollow anyway. I'll be honest with you. I'm happy how I do mine, so I don't see the point. I I will practice it, you know, in the future. But um, right. So I've just got to alter this very slightly. So please bear Richard, with me. Richard Rath, no, he doesn't, because that's what he was taught when he first. Started. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And he hasn't. He doesn't know anything different. Right. Well, like I say, it does look good on video. It does. It, oh, it's very effective. Uh, very that's impressive. An impressive looking cut, mate. But... Is that clear? Yeah. It's mm -hmm. catch. Yep, we're good. Yep, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. Now, I am going to do what I said. Okay, actually, it's not as good as it could be. Talk amongst yourselves. I'll tell you what. Let me bring the lads back in for a second because I like to get the get the focus perfect on this. So you can you can chat away, lads, while I'm uh, getting this sorted. Just get the. He says we can chat away, and he just doesn't shut up, does he? No, he doesn't. I don't know. Are you supposed to chat away when you're yapping? <laughs> you need we love you really, Mike. <laughs> I, I'm not chatting. Uh, Yuli has said turning is a cutting action, sanding is a scraping action, uh, so scrapers belong with sandpaper. Oh, uh, they kind of do, yeah. I mean, yeah. if I'm working oh, with um, <laughs> Punky, we'll I often use a cabinet scraper. Yeah. Which has got to be presented well below centre. Um, it's all rest well out of the way because it is effectively sanding, although you are cutting to some extent. Jerry Dempsey is <laughs> having to go. He says, I've, I've enjoyed the lessons. Bye for now. Bye, Bye Jerry. Jerry. Cheers. All the best, Terry. Take care, mate. Okay, is that clear? Be part back hollowing. Should be part of an art becoming an RPT. Avery oh. Nolson says, uh, What about the laws about bullying at work? <laughs> did, did they not apply here? They don't apply here, no. you know the rules. <laughs> we we all know Mike far too well to um, obey those yeah. rules. 
Exactly. Yeah, I should hope so. Ah, that's right. That's what I wanted There's to no get. There's no blue ink here. It's all good okay. humor. So you can see, um, you can see there the frame in frame. Um, I did that but earlier on. Nice. You got pretty bad tear out there. Okay, so the idea. I don't know if that's going to be too bright now, like that. Is that better? No, that's fine. It's okay. It's yeah. okay. okay. Yeah, we can see. Okay, so no, we've got the tool rest. Half inch, sharpen it first. I'm not going to. I've got. I've, I've just got to use the three eighths. Um, okay. Is that one of those robust um, tool rests? It is. Yeah, they're okay for certain things, but they're not my favourite in the world for everything because it's I think, too, I think too, I would like a, a more upright one. Too wide. Yes, they do one. This yeah. is the comfort rest, which is. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, I, okay. I have the other one, which is um, more upright. Mm. Oh, you haven't got the comfort rest. I have got a comfort rest, but um, that's yeah. the the bowl one, so um, mm. it doesn't matter on that. Mm -hmm. <coughs> no, I'd, out of choice, I wouldn't have these. They're too too wide here, but they're nice right. rests. They're a nice rest. Okay, so you can see the tear out there. Now, what I'm going to do is just reiterate on the importance of traverse. Um, against your uh, speed. Now I've turned this down now to 720 RPM, okay? Now, if I go quickly, that should tear it up really nicely, which it has, okay? Now I can keep at that speed, but if I go, I know it's going to be a bit boring watching me do this, but if I go slowly, or slower, and let the wood come down onto the edge and make my way to the center without falling off the cut. you will see a much improved surface. And that's because I was cutting at the speed relative to the speed of the R to the RPM. Now I would normally do some of this, I would say around 2000 RPM. Now, if I go across here at 2000 RPM, too quickly, hopefully, it will tear it up again. So what I have to do here is to still go twice as fast as I was with the other one, but I can go through this speed now. And bear in mind, this is very punky, dry, spalted beach. And if you look at that now, you should see there is very little, if any, tear out. So that's how you sort out your end grain with a spindle gouge. You put your tool at, a, at the level you, uh, at the, the tool rest, the height you want for that particular operation, make sure you're cutting on center or just above and put the tool through the wood, float in the bevel, all the way through, making sure that the bevel is at 90 degrees to the headstock, or uh, sorry, 90 degrees to the uh, to the bars, and that's where you go through. Uh, Andy and the woodwork man is finished. Andy the wood, uh, Andy's asking. Uh, yes. It's a, he says it's a silly question, but I no, don't think not. it is all that silly. Uh, but can you go too slowly? Um. Yes, I suppose the answer is yes. The reason you can go too slowly is that you start to lose your momentum. Um, you know, micro movements of the tip will start to scratch it and put yeah, indentations exactly. in it. Yeah. Well, once you've got your bevel and you've got a comfortable speed, 
just keep going. Yeah, just do the, do the speed going, relative, yeah. and you'll have to work that out with the speed yeah. of your lathe. Go the speed mm -hmm. relative to the actual spinning of the wood. Yeah. So I suppose if you went slow enough, tear, wood, just slow down. Yeah. I suppose if you went slow enough, you just burn the edge of your tool. Well, what you do is you start, you start burnish, micro removing yeah. the tip, and it would it would or burnish, or it would make little mm. grooves where you are not yeah. going flowing perfectly. Yeah, it's also something. very hard to to keep the tool in a perfect straight line yeah if you're going too slowly is, is but, a balance point but yes, that's yeah. why for me um 2000 rpm is about right i mean yeah i could do it at 3000 rpm but i you know i don't see the but your muscle memory's it. got you to 2000 in it so yeah, that's what you used to that's the most important thing that the bevel is pointing in the direction of your cut yep. you pick up your cut nice and easily to begin with and you can go through, if you don't fall off the cut, I've got a bit of a dip here, that's why. But I'll follow you, the you, uh, Yuli has answered that question too. He says, on some woods you go too slowly, and all you yeah. do is generate heat in your tool. Yeah. Which, yeah. Doesn't, which on, doesn't, help with the, doesn't help with the sharpness of the gouge either. No. And on things like you, would actually cause micro cracks and yeah, stuff. It would, so. yeah. Really, yeah. Most hard woods would do that, start to. There is a right speed, but the right speed is not the speed of the lathe or the speed ah, of the Ah, good. Tool you combined. are. Okay. Can you see that? Yes. That's a burn mark. You went too slow. So, too slow. So, yes, the answer to your question is yes, you can't go too slow. There we go. Very good question. Not silly at all. Yeah, not a bit silly, no. It's very similar, actually, to um, when you... Um, when you're parting off with a parting tool, yeah. certain woods, you've got to go a lot slower than others. Um, if, if you start parting off at 1,500, 2,000 RPM, you're going to burn. There's no shadow. It doesn't matter what wood it is. Or jam again, or whatever. Exactly. So, yes, it is. Um, the optimum is what you're happy with, and it's relative to the speed that you're actually doing. Okay, so... Um, Next, hollowing out. Um, cool. Do we want that one again? Yep. I yeah, that's know. good. Yeah, okay. Okay. Yep. So, um, is, my, uh, is my sound clicking? Yeah, there was no. a couple of clicks. We are getting a few clicks, yeah, but not that many. Oh, sorry. I don't know what that is. Okay. Um, so we were talking about earlier there are several methods of, of um, doing a depth hole but if you use the uh, three eight spindle gouge all you need to do just like you would with a drill bit is just make a give it somewhere to start now the important thing is to have the tool at have it horizontal at point of entry. Hang on, center. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then slow it down slightly. And literally, <coughs> excuse me, put your point in, a little bit of pressure, and just keep feeding it in. So you said bang on centre there, but I would say an eighth of a millimetre above centre yeah. gives yeah, you a see, slightly no, bigger hole in the tool and it's, it cuts down the heat. <laughs> Push it in quick, okay. mate. Am I going too slow, I'll hmm. Yeah. But what I do is, is just kind Round of it. Just a little bit of a close the flute a wee bit over to the left. Yeah, I do the same. <coughs> you actually look there, Mike. It's not on the tool rest think, now. I think your tool um... rest too low, Mike. Just yeah, I think you're right. Anyway, it, it is possible to do it <laughs> that <laughs> yeah, way. You, there, that's it. You should get it now. Round an inch. Ah, better. There you go. Better. No, I've got, I've got a dimple in there now. Anyway, yeah. point made. So what we'll do is a bit of hollowing now. So that's the way to do your... Make sure it's on centre. 
make sure you're at 90 degrees and just push it in and it'll work. Now, when you're doing hollowing, it's a little bit below center and you're using the left-hand part of the wing and it's easier when you're out here, you see. What happens is, is when you go deeper, but this is only a 3-8 spindle gouge. So what you're doing is a sort of a rowing motion and you want to keep I would normally do it this way, but I think that covers up what I'm doing. So no, you're okay. No, you're okay. You do it your way. So basically, you're pivoting the tool on the tool rest, forming an arc. Yep. Now you're not looking for finish here. You're just looking to hog away wood. And then if you want it to come out further, as long as, as long as you approach at the same position, once you get that cut where you, oh, you can see, when you start going deeper, what tends to happen is if you're looking in, as you look in, your handle's dropping. So you're going mm. above center too much and you start getting uh, chattering. Yeah. So the idea is to do it, ideally, blind. And just okay. feel. Do it by feel, rather than observe sight. This is not do the ideal feel and, and attempt to keep the inside smaller than the outside. Yes. Yeah, that helps. Doesn't always work. <laughs> Doesn't always work, but you know, it's worth trying. You know. Well, more, I've gone to the depth hole piece. now, but then all you do then is refine it as you wish. And make sure. It's a nice easy way to hollow a little box on a goblet. If you focus on that top, you'll see that Mike's at. He's got the. Um, Level turned over slightly, sort of 11 o'clock ish. Yeah. Not that far yeah. over. But he's turning it as he comes round. You must, the important thing is to do keep moving your tool this way. Because uh, what tends to happen is that you, you don't follow through, if you like, and you're not keeping that edge in contact with the wood. You've got to keep it on the same plane all the way through. So it's still cutting on the same bit or, or same part. <clears throat> but I tend to use my half inch. Now I can get rid. You can't see this, but there is a dimple, a bit of a mounted at the bottom. which I've got rid of. That's just hogging wood away. That's all it's doing. And then the finish then, you can either do a um, drop drop the handle, uh, drop the handle, the rest drop the tool the rest, and use the left-hand part of the wing again, but as a shear scrape. But I personally just go in with <coughs> a... This is just a little half inch um, negative, negative rate scraper rate. I've made. And I go in there and just put it up slightly and just go and <laughs> clean it up. Just clean him up. Well, Andy says he does most things blind anyway. <laughs> well, exactly. It's got to fly off, isn't it? Especially if it's a goblet. So, and mm. as I say, bear in mind, it's a very pinky wood anyway. <laughs> but and, that's and Joseph how, suggests you should just use a Jacob's chuck as well, but... <laughs> yeah, you can do, yeah. As I, as I said, n none of this is, um, oh, you know, you'll have to use it. If the tool is in your hand, what it shows is that you could use it for a multitude of things. Do I always, do I always make a depth hole with a spindle gouge? 
No, I don't. No. I normally use that, which is a smaller version of what Pete's got. Um, yeah. And I just make my depth hole with that. It's easy. I use the rest to hold that, push it in, and job is done. Uh, uh, Mike, what have you got on the end of that piece of handle? Was that just a, a Jacob drill bit? It's a same thing. It's a cheap it's a chuck, uh, right. drill chuck. Yeah. Okay. I think I got that off Amazon for oh years ago now. I think two. They came in twos. All right. And it was about seven quid for two of them. <laughs> yeah. And I've got and the I got old in the drawer. Mm -hmm. um, oh, similar thing. Yeah. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Uh, and, and that's a very handy tool. Yeah. I've also got a smaller one, which I, I actually bought a hand drill from Proper Job, which is a, a cheap uh, DIY bits place. Yeah. For four pounds. Um, took the chuck off. Took the chuck off it and stuck that on the end of a handle. Does yeah. the same thing with a smaller size. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's uh, there's there are lots of different things that you can do with. If you're doing a large tool. one, then, then running a portion of it into it is good. Um, I did some if you, if you don't have it recently, yeah. and I, I was taking um, seventy six mil portion of it into those because it was quicker than hollowing it out with a tool. If you don't have the funds to buy another Jacobs chuck, you can always just put a drill bit into a into a handle, drill a hole in it, turn it around, aerodite it in, and away you go. Yep. I'm going to leave you on no, here for a minute, just... guys. I'm just going to disconnect this and reconnect it because it's clicking right. quite a bit. Okay. Okay. Cool. So if I go, I oh, go. I'm doing and that. I I'll grab my other one. She's over back. here somewhere. I just, uh, I just thought that little chuck on the end of the uh, end there handle was a good idea for different size drill bits. But it's not hard to make half dozen handles. Here's a small one that I made. Um, so I, bought, yeah, good. I, I was planning to get one of these from a car boot sale, which is probably the best way to get one. It's just a little hand drill, you know, the little windy handle. Mm. But when I saw that they were four pounds, I thought, oh, I'll just buy one. I bought a brand new one, ripped it apart, and made that. It's a, it's a handy tool. Mm. Not the best chuck in the world, but it does the job. Right. And peaceful, Mike's quiet. <laughs> yeah, no, I oh, know, oh, isn't it? Jeez. Failed that. Right. There's a Hello. click. I don't know what it is. As Andy says, yeah, I, I did video. I think I video both of those getting made, actually. I think you did, yeah. Okay, clear of end grain. That's basically covered. Um, and, of course, it is very, very usable, in my opinion. I, I use spindle gouge, things like goblets, boxes. You can use a 3 8 bulb gouge. Of course you can. You know, to do your shaping, if you so wish. I just prefer using a spindle gouge. And I normally use my half inch for a lot of it. And then for the finer stuff, then I use the three eighths. <clears throat> but it's just to show what it can be done. This is a nice tool. This is three quarter inch. I very rarely use it. It's okay for It's like this, the spindle roughing gouge does nice shallow coves. It's, it's nice for doing coves and stuff like that. But I just use a spindle gouge. Um, maybe, maybe I should use that considering how my cope came out. Well, that's quite even actually, it's not too bad. Question from for Riot for you, Mike. He, yeah, he has a lot of chatter hollowing out goblets. What's your advice to reduce chatter? Again, um, slow down, and if the chatter, later, yes, yeah, I was going to say, if the chatter starts. The further in you go in, in other words, the the edge is further oh. away from the tool rest. Um, that could also be a situation you have to go lighter cuts. It does happen as you get below, beyond the with a three eight spindle gouge. I would say it will happen after around the <clears throat> two inch mark. 
if it's going to happen. It also depends on the length timber you've got off the truck. Yeah, it, how far out from the truck it All is right. as yeah. well. A t- it'll whip a bit, so slow down, slow the speed yeah. down slightly. But the the main the main problem is normally pushing too hard and also coming mm-hmm. off coming off the edge. It's always easy starting, and the deeper you get, your position of your angle of attack will change, unless you concentrate. Mm. And especially if you start looking down, naturally your handle is going to go <coughs> down, so your cut's going to go higher than center. <coughs> Afraid of resharpening. Don't forget, yeah, I'm, getting into it. I'm using this more and more for goblet-style hollowing. I do. It's the same as a mini hollower. He's got a six mil carbide cutter on the end of it. The reason I'm using it is I'm doing quite a few bits of ropey timber into goblets because I like the patterns that you get on them. And this is more delicate. It's um, Mm. it just allows me to be a lot more delicate with my cuts, take a a much kinder cut on the wood. Um, But it does require finishing when you when you've got it hollowed. And of course, the surface you cut in there is much shallower, and much smaller because it's a round cutter. You're not actually taking a deep cut with a wide, with yeah. a wide bevel. That's and it. it's imp- it's important to say say rather it's a dished cutter, so it's not scraping. It's actually slicing the wood. You can. I'm not, I'm not advocating this. I've tried it and it does work. You can actually ride the bevel and go down the goblet like you might do with a spindle gouge. And you get a lovely finishing cut with it as well. Yeah. And I've Look done at that. A catch. That can yeah. give you a catch if you get it right. It can give idea. you a very bad catch. Yeah. Of course it can. I'm not. Will you make I, a new I, goblet? <laughs> I did say you don't. I don't advocate it, but I've tried it and it works very well. Uh, the hollowing tools are actually very versatile. Um, I personally use them 95% of the time for hollowing, but I play around with them sometimes, and you can make beads and coves and everything with them like you would with any other carbide tool. Yeah. So they're not just for hollowing, they are designed for hollowing primarily, but you can use them for other jobs. Um, which might be the subject of another video at some stage. Yeah, maybe. Know. But, you know... So, it's, I, I used to next, always next do Sunday. goblets with nothing but a, but a spindle gouge. <laughs> I'll be yeah. with um, me next Sunday, mate. So I would no. be... Drilling and hollowing with the spindle gouge, and nothing, no other tool got used. Mm. Then mm. I was doing bigger ones, and, and I got bored taking the wood out of the middle. Deeper so ones. Forcing a bit into it. Um, and at the moment, and I'm not saying this is going to last, but at the moment, on some of them, I'm using a hollowing tool because it's given me the cut I want. It's not necessarily going to last because I, I do tend to be one of them that sort of I go through phases. I use yeah, certain tools at certain times. I do. Um, Definitely. You can you can tell that by the. Yeah, the, there's a few behind me. And Brian. But yeah, I, I, I like to use certain tools in certain ways at certain times, and then I get bored with that, and I go back to a different method. Hmm. But at the moment, I'm finding that it's quite a good way of getting. Um, the four-inch style gobblers that I'm doing quite frequently. That's quite a good way of getting it done. Hmm. No, I, I agree. It, it, it's ho- you always say it's horses for courses. I, I'll tell you what, and this is not a... I tried something out the other day. Somebody said, can you turn a goblet with a skew? So I turned that with nothing else but the skew. All right? Hollowed it as well. Not a perfect finish inside, but not a bad finish. I did use two sizes of skew, but again... Why would you? You use a skew on part of it, but it's possible to turn a goblet. Obviously, a bigger one would be easier um, with a skew. So every tool is very versatile. But as Pete said, you get into a system of using a certain tool for a certain job. And if that's what works for you, that's the right tool for the job. With a caveat that your skew for the hollowing was used as a scraper. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't try but to go around the inside. No, I, I got with a half inch. I got down. Use on the use it on the flap. 
it's it's flat there but i if i'd spent more time i could have got around with a smaller around, radius yeah. skew but yeah. um and then you can get a nice finish on the on the sides by using the skew as a negative rate scraper mm. which is basically what it is if it's on its side but it yeah it it burrowed in quite well. I mean, scrapers as well. I mean, you know, you can turn a bowl with a scraper. You can turn a goblet with a scraper. You can hollow out with scrapers, you know. Uh, so yeah. it, there is so much versatility with everything, and it depends what you're happy with and what you want to do. Yeah. Yuli makes a good point. He says you can play around a golf with an eight iron and a putter. But why? Exactly. exactly. But why? Done that. Yeah, why? Yeah, why a seven it? iron I used. He's a yeah. seven iron. Yeah. We used to have competition years ago when I played golf. We used to have... played around the golf with a seven iron. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I have. Yeah. You, you know, well. let's be honest hmm. about it. If you take your driver and you go off off into the woods, you take your, t- take your nine iron and you go straight down the fairway, it might take you three shots to get to the green, Each but one. you're at the green. <laughs> you know, you're, you're, sort not, of you're, not, you're not in behind the trees here first time. Exactly. So, you know, and it's the same with this. I mean, it's just... Craig Williams has joined us. Good evening. Evening, Craig. Morning, How ball. are you? Hey. Best time to join, mate, just as we finish. I'm just going to finish. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> We're done. I don't, don't think there's anything else, is there? Oh, hi, Craig. <laughs> no, I don't think so, mate. You've covered it. No, the, uh, you've, done, you've covered most later. of it. Yeah, I think so. A bit of fun along so. the way, which is important. Thing. That's Don't the you, you haven't covered when cutting a finial maybe with the side, the wing, using the wing as a skew of a spindle gouge? Yeah, that's, uh, you know, if, but, you, um, if you produce, if, well, I'd, I'd have to put it between centres again now. But, yeah, but, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, I did slightly in smoothing actually, those yeah. off. Yeah. You, you know, yeah. Yeah. if you use the wing at 40, I said earlier on, if you... Um, present your cutting edge at 45 degrees ish to the wood, then it'll slice the wood just like a skew. Ooh. And the hardest thing is to keep it going at the same level of cut, if you like, to get a nice uh, parallel finish, uh, a parallel edge, if you like, instead of going dipping down or dipping up or getting ridges. But if you take it nice and slow and concentrate, and use your index finger, let's say, as a guide, and lock yourself in, and just move your body along, then it will slice through the wood, and you'll get a profile Skew-type. like that. There we are. That was a bit I did on the on the side, and that was just presenting the tool at 45 degrees. Cindy just Jones remembered that. She, practice, she, practice, practice. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But again, why would you necessarily have to practice with that when you could just pick up a skew and do it? Yeah. And just do a planing cut. But, you know, it is all, you could do it with a scraper. You know, the square end scraper, if you put it up at 45 degrees and have it at the right at okay. angle of attack, it'll slice the wood. It'll slice the wood. Any edge will present yeah, it at the right angle. One and a half steps to my sharpening system. Well, he's been playing this, bit. I know. So well, for you, your size, <laughs> that's about 15 foot. It's getting used, but, yeah. And, and not wishing to sound boring but that is a lot of problem with a lot of newer turners is that they their sharpening system i'm exaggerating now is at the other end of the workshop your sharpening system should literally be mine is literally half a step i just turn around to the back and it's there yeah so i never apart from when i'm doing a live demo well i'm thinking why isn't this half inch spindle go cutting oh is that's why i just rough down a piece of wood with it that's why the edge is gone um you just touch it up or use a diamond home. Mm-hmm. You know, if you don't want to set up your sharpening system, you can just refresh the edge with a diamond home like you can with a skew. But on a gouge, it's hard. It's a bit more difficult because you, you've you got you've got to go round. It's not just a case of just doing that. You've got to go around, you know, um, and keep it. You still, not on that one, that's not a good idea. This one here. You you keep the um, diamond card on the heel and the nose the and just follow the curve. And that is not as easy as doing it on a skew. But I can do it there and just show you. This is just a 600. 
you is that good enough yeah yes, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. literally i am now find a bevel fi find a bevel and just go around i tend to find it easier to keep the card in the same place on the one hand and then on the other hand i can do it that way as well because i'm still still um bevel contact and keeping it and that's refreshed the edge yeah this really is refreshed but um it takes a minute two minutes the worst thing is to have a blunt tool not just because it won't cut the wood easily you're putting more pressure on the wood and that's when you start getting problems so I was saying, there's about 20 people that haven't done a thumbs up if you've enjoyed tonight give a thumbs up because it does help with the youtube stats yeah. and all the rest of it yes it's only 20 people it's only 25 years <laughs> well, <that's true>. <laughs> <laughs> okay well thank you very much indeed everybody for coming uh I thoroughly enjoyed it it'll be about three or four weeks before i do another live um see me next Terry's sunday mr them. terry is here next sunday i think um, am i right terry terry at heckington arts i'll see you sunday seven o'clock Terry at <coughs> art. <laughs> right, have you still got a link in your copy and paste bit? Of course I have. Really not. And I don't know what I'll be doing, but it may be a, maybe Susie wants a Christmas tree. So I'll do one of those anyway. Good. Or two, Excellent. or three, or four, I'll, or maybe I'll a dozen. I'll tune in a watch. I'll tune in a watch. Yeah. I can be a watcher. Different types okay, of guys, Christmas trees. Okay, guys, and lasses, thank you very much indeed, as I keep saying, for there's, there's coming Terry's, uh, There's pleasure. Terry's channel link uh, there, guys. Of Terry's channel link down the bottom there. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I'd like to thank Pete and Terry and Brian, as usual, for being my faithfully earworms. You're welcome. You're welcome. Until You're welcome. I. You're welcome. No, no, it's been an honour to be in your presence. Oh, God. How I, <laughs> yeah. lie. How I lie. Well, Brian hasn't been here all the time, has he? He's dropped no. in and out. I, I yeah, keep exactly. getting kicked out for some reason. I don't know why that is. <laughs> I don't know why. I don't know why. <laughs> Something to do with okay, that guys, Welsh fella. All the best. Yeah, Till yeah. the next time. Take care and enjoy your turning. And I'll see you as soon as I possibly can. Bye-bye, everyone. Cheers, everyone. Cheers, Cheers mate. Bye. Thanks for coming in. Nice to see you. Bye, everybody.